morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for another Job Train How Talent session. I hope you're having a great week so far. I hope you're also benefiting from this beautiful, awesome weather we're having too. I'm delighted this morning to be joined by the one and only, the legendary Stephen O'Donnell. Hi, I was going to say, gonna say veteran, but that seems a little bit um, harsh. But Stephen um, has That's had right. an illustrious career in the recruitment industry. Um, and is also the founder of the National Online Recruitment Awards as well. Um, mm. Plus, in addition to that, he has a load of experience of all things to do with video, and that's what our discussion is going to be about this morning. And mm. uh, we've got quite a lot to get through, haven't we, Stephen? Um, uh, yeah, it's a big topic. But a big it topic. is a big topic. So the main areas we're going to explore this morning are how and why the use of video has been catapulted through the course of this year. I think a lot mm. of us will be aware of some of the reasons for that. Um, how best to bring um, workplace stories and job ad adverts to life using video, uh, how to use video to enhance communication with candidates and colleagues via email and messaging, uh, how to conduct video interviews with confidence, and then finally, understanding a little bit more about how to choose the right tools and tech that you need in order to produce really professional videos. Stephen, I've given you a little bit of an introduction, but have I missed anything? Is there anything that I haven't covered that you'd like to share with everybody here? Uh, no, no, that that pretty much covers it. Uh, yes, I have been in recruitment for a long time, probably since most of our of your viewers were born, uh, and uh, uh, and and it shows. Uh, but yeah, uh, I I've always been a bit of a fad gadget. Uh, so anything to do with recruitment technology, I've always been switched on to. I've been uh, uh, working, uh, running the the National Online Recruitment Awards since two thousand. So anything technology wise that's in the space that I'm always really interested in. And audio, video, uh, all kinds of communications, the tools that are used in doing that, uh, I have a particular fascination with because what I always want to, uh, to, to do when looking at technology is consider how does this work for candidates? How, how are candidates perceiving this? And are you getting your message across to them? In the olden days, uh, the very olden days of recruitment, candidates, uh, for the most part, they, they accepted what they were told, uh, they did what they were told, uh, you know, jump through hoops, do this, do that. Uh, and the information that was available to candidates before accepting a job, never mind, you know, before applying for uh, an advert, was pretty scant. Uh, and often they discovered all about a company uh, on the day that they actually started. So uh, nowadays, people want to find out much more before they get into the process and the ability to research organizations and uh, find out if it's a good match for you as a, as a job seeker uh, is much more, uh, much, much more there for you. Uh, the tools are there, the information is there. Some companies still keep it a little, uh, 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 things uh, under wraps, but more and more organizations are being more transparent and that's a good thing. It's a good thing all around. Yeah, it definitely is. But there's so much opportunity with video because um, there's a few stats like a band around. Um, there was a stat that suggested that perhaps fewer than 1% of Fortune 500 companies at the moment are using video to enhance job adverts. Mm -hmm. The job adverts attract about 20 times more engagement than text adverts alone. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. one as well, I think, is that um, videos or job adverts that include Hiring managers, as opposed to us as HR and recruiters, attacked, uh, attract about eight times more engagement as well. So lots of opportunity there. Yeah. So we sort of get started. Um, clearly, this year has been one to remember, forget, yeah. um, but it's it's caused or forced us all to embrace technology in new and inventive ways and to get to grips, especially mm. with videos. We seem to have lived our lives or are living our lives on Teams or you know Zoom and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. But but why and how has that that change taken place for, for, from your perspective, and what are the the, the benefits there? Well, the, the the first thing to think about as a as a backdrop to that is that hmm. the the pandemic that came on the current unpleasantness uh, it it came on in in the middle of uh, an economic boom. Uh, so things were doing very well uh, in February, January, February this year. Everything was going well, and we were all expecting a big year. Uh, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, <laughs> yeah, but but what what it meant was that at that time we were all very optimistic. We all had, to a degree, uh, money in our pockets, uh, and we're we're planning on on using that. So uh, the the pandemic didn't come at a at, at an ebb, but at a low point uh, in the economic cycle. It came at a at a high point, uh, and that meant that when when people were asked not to 
not to come into the office when they're working from home, then certainly at that point, people were in a position to 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 spend money or to explore uh, options to set themselves up at home with you know webcams and microphones and uh, all the, the paraphernalia that go with it. Uh, and there was the, the, there was a boom in all things to do with consumption of content on video. No, in the first place, people would automatically say, well, uh, the likes of Netflix and so on, the, their subscriptions went through the roof. Uh, uh, companies like uh, Zoom, uh, people using that for business, uh, considerably uh, went through the roof. I think Zoom's, I took a note earlier on, Zoom's uh, share price in January this year were $68, uh, and then they went to a peak of $457, or about seven times wow. the, the value. So if you were looking for a re quick return on your investment in a year where everything else is going in the other direction, then if you would money in Zoom uh, or if you would money in, in Amazon, uh, then you would have done pretty well. So uh, I've certainly the, spent a lot of money with Amazon. I wish I'd invested in Amazon. <laughs> I think well, we yeah, all have. Yeah. <laughs> Well, imagine that. Imagine if all the money you spent on Amazon buying products this year, you just bought shares. Uh, you would have done exceptionally well. But yeah, well, getting, back, that. <laughs> yeah, get, getting back to video, uh, the 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 fact that people are consuming and ready to consume so much video content in all its forms, whether it be on smart TVs or on uh, on, on on mobile devices, uh, if, uh, if if people are consuming them on on, on tablets. On any type of uh, uh, machinery that they have around about them, my, my dad, for example, my dad is 81, uh, and over the years, as as obviously I, I like like a gadget, and I'm trying to get him to use computers or internet or uh, e email. Over the past 20 years, I've tried my best, and all of them, he's given it a go and given up. But this year, this year, uh, on uh, on his Virgin TV box, uh, he now has access to YouTube. And he's, he's logged in on my YouTube account because when I was there, that was the quickest way to do it. So on my YouTube history, it shows me that he's been watching videos all through the night, all night, every night, uh, is is just consuming so much content. Now, he's an 81-year-old guy who can't get his email going, but uh, on this, it's a doddle for him. So in terms of access, in terms of ease of use, video content is there. Now, you might not be making video, but there are lots of people out there who are generating video content. They're not not—they're not necessarily professional YouTubers, but they're making content, and that boils right back to uh, employers and recruiters because whatever happens uh, from, a, from a leisure point of view when people are making and consuming video content, then business will recognize that and will follow on, will, will generate content to communicate with their audience, and their audience may well be First of all, it might be their existing employees. It might be uh, for for advertising their products. It, but be going going beyond that, it may well be advertising themselves uh, to uh, to potential new hires, whether it's for specific vacancies that they're hiring for today, or just their employer brand. And employer brand is obviously uh, very much a hot thing. Where that transparency that I referred to before, uh, companies want people to have a peek behind the curtain and understand what their organisation is about. Now, if you have a good employer brand, or if you think you have a good employer brand, you'll want to share that. Uh, the, partly the reason that some employers have, have been shy to do so. You were talking about the, uh, you know, the the, the, the low percentage of the, uh, the the top businesses who make video content. Mm -hmm. Partly, partly because partly the reason for that is that uh, companies are often not entirely confident they have a good employer brand. Uh, so, you know, if you don't, then buy up don't make videos about it because it's not going to help you any. Uh, but also there are so many legal uh, issues that can get in between putting out video content because employers to a degree think they might make themselves liable for one thing or another. They might get caught out. But uh, companies who are making big strides are making big benefits uh, from uh, from using uh, video as a, as a means of getting their message out and communicating with new hires, uh, their existing employees, and the, the the wider market out there. Yeah, totally agree. I think going back six months ago, a lot of us perhaps weren't all that confident about appearing on video, <laughs> recording video and stuff, and suddenly we're all experts, or at least we feel more mm. comfortable with it. Mm. These, you know, job train, how talent sessions were born out of COVID ultimately in terms of, you know, suddenly using video. And yeah. from my own experience, pretty scary to begin with, but now, you know, more comfortable with it and all the rest of yeah. it. Um, we've all been invited into one another's homes to 
too. And it looks like that mm. is not going to change anytime soon. I'm lucky enough to be in the office, but we're using the office as a hub. Um, but, you know, with that yeah. confidence of using video, of appearing on video, then we've got a really great opportunity to start telling our stories a little bit, whether it be personal brand or, or workplace yeah. stories and that kind of thing. So how, what are you, what's your advice about the best way to get started with creating simple video that tells yeah. a bit of a story about the organization, what it's like to work there, you know, all that kind of thing? Yeah. Well, if, if I can go back a couple of years, yeah. I remember when everyone was doing the ice bucket challenge uh, and uh, uh, me for look at an idiot i went and did it in the river outside uh but uh, uh at that point a lot of people who had never made any video content before were suddenly realizing that they had a they had a a, a studio in their pocket uh, the mobile phone is a really easy way to uh, film yourself uh, get content online and it might be embarrassing you might look daft but in terms of the technical side of things you've worked out what buttons to press uh, and at that time that really accelerated knowledge of and, and, and use of the tools on your mobile phone to make video content. So it, it jumped forward then, uh, and uh, and and you know, getting getting back to today, the the ability to see into people's homes uh, is is a big barrier that's broken down uh, in itself. Uh, when you're looking at someone who might be the chief executive of a PLC, but he's on a call. Uh, you know, he might be on the BBC talking about his latest figures, but he's doing it from his kitchen table, and suddenly he doesn't seem, you know, the the or oh, the you know the the the, the unapproachable CEO uh, that he might have done before. Suddenly, you realise it's a real person, and it happens in business as well. When you're speaking with, or when when you're on a Zoom call with someone, and it's in their spare bedroom, and the kids come in, and uh, you know, all sorts of things are going on, then you can relate to the people much more. Now, that's the exact same thing when you have hiring managers on video. Uh, if, you've got, if, if you were making a video advert for a, a company for a vacancy and you had actors in it, say, uh, or you had just the HR department saying, you know, we're, we're looking for this type of person for this type of job, then that's all well and good. But the things that they say will be the things that you, you would expect them to say. They'll be entirely on brand. They'll be absolutely on message but you won't really be more informed about what it's like to work there. But if you have the hiring manager on uh, on screen and she's saying, uh, you know, this is our environment, this is where we work, here behind me you can see uh, your team, uh, and in doing so you can see her personality and you can relate to her. You think, yeah, that's someone I could work with or there's no way I would work there. What happens is that candidates uh, can much more accurately self-select themselves for that position. Now, one of the biggest problems we've had over the past few years as technology has marched forward is that any candidate could apply for 50 jobs in the morning, you know, before having a cup of tea. Uh, and that means that talent acquisition uh, recruiters are having to somehow manage that really high number of applicants because people are people are applying willy nilly. No, there's a, there's a bit of a there's a, a an old uh, uh, not a saying as such, but uh, where men will apply for anything uh, and, uh, and, and send off applications, but whereas w women will want to be absolutely sure uh, before applying, they'll look at all the reasons to rule themselves out, whereas men will look at reasons to rule themselves in. But across the board, what you tend to find is that more people are applying than really should have done in the first place, if only they considered it a bit more. And of course, TA recruiters are ruining the day that they made it easy to, to, to apply. But when you get to video, coming back to the point, when you get to video, candidates much more accurately self-select themselves for, for a vacancy. They they decide, uh, yes, that's a person I could work with. Yes, that's a company that I can see what they're doing. I can see the team there. I can see in the background, if you're showing people who are on the team, I can see people who look like me. Now, uh, the, the visual aspect of that is really important because if you're if you're coming from if you're if you're a woman, a woman if you're coming from a diverse background then it really helps to be able to see people of similar backgrounds visually in the background it might be uh, you know any number of, uh, of of demographics that you're seeing there but it makes you feel that your application is going to be taken seriously uh, because there are lots of people out there who are from different backgrounds. They might have an unusual name uh, from, a, you know, from a different country. Uh, it might be that uh, they're, uh, you know, a woman in a very, a very male-dominated industry, and you think, well, what are the chances of getting into that company? Because mm -hmm. some companies have just got a reputation; they just don't hire many women. If you saw on video that actually 
that wasn't the case, uh, then you're more inclined to apply. So what I, I was doing a lot of work with a company last year, video my job, uh, and what they found with their clients, uh, and we got feedback from a lot of clients, is that the when you use video to uh, to, to recruit, uh, certainly with one client, Siemens, uh, they had a 47% step up uh, in the, uh, the the volume of female applicants for jobs. Uh, wow. And and it seems almost like a you know too big a number. But what ha what had happened was that the uh, the candidates who weren't suitable weren't applying uh, because they could see they were more accurately matching themselves and saying you know that's not for me. Uh, and uh, and and women who were having that insight to an organisation they weren't holding back. They were applying where they weren't doing before. What they also found was that the measurable calibre of candidates actually stepped up by 170 percent uh now that's again that still seems like a crazy thing but it's made up of those two factors uh irrelevant candidates were not applying uh or, or a chunk of them weren't and candidates who were never going to apply maybe because they had preconceptions about your organization they were doing so so you had a much richer seam of people to work with uh and if that doesn't if that doesn't convince you to get on video i don't know what will but mm. it, 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 what companies also found was that the hiring managers were a bit on the shy side and and it was a hard sell to get someone who was a a mid-level supervisor hiring for a you know a new person for a role uh, say you know can you record a one minute to camera to you know on your phone uh talking about the job and what you're looking for uh, and so on and Traditionally, uh, you know, people, you know, oh, I, I don't want to do that. That's not me. I've not done my hair today or, you know, I've not got the right clothes on or the background looks a mess. But actually, if you can give that authenticity down the camera to the people on the other end, then you make a connection. And, uh, and, and, and when you explain the status to them and they say, well, I do really need to fill this job. Okay, let's go for it. Uh, again, authenticity is is one of those things that you, you just can't buy. But Everyone has it. Everyone has it already. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And the, the diversity stats that you shared are mm. really interesting. And, and so mm. is the fact that it can encourage people from, you know, whether it's different genders or ethnic origins or whatever it might be to, to uh, apply versus text based ads. And, and let's face it, everybody, you know, we, we don't spend lots of time online, you know, reading loads of text. We, we spend time online consuming video and text based ads are boring they can only come give convey so much information versus a video which just shows so much more and engages mm. people so much more as well and even though there's going to be a ton of candidates applying for our roles it's really important that we give back them access to our organizations our personalities engage them inform them and as yep. you said you know the opportunity to either self-select or even very importantly deselect themselves based on that so on the basis yeah. that our hiring managers especially you know should now be used to using videos to some degree a quick one minute video probably isn't too much of a big ask to get them to do that and that kind of flows through really into the, the rest of the hiring process it's not just about engaging people at the point of um, a job advert but we've got to think very carefully now about engagement through the recruitment process we're living in a virtual world we're not going to be doing physical interviews, when we look at onboarding, I know we've got our first new hire that's going through virtual onboarding um, mm. at the moment, and that's something we want to consider very carefully. So what are the different yeah. ways in which we can use video more effectively through the rest of the recruitment process to keep people engaged, informed, and ultimately, when we look at onboarding, we must make them feel part of the organization before they have joined, even though they're going to be joining from their bedrooms more than likely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, of course, when... Uh... When candidates are, are looking at joining any organization, actually, can I just check, is my is my audio and video in sync or out of sync? Just a little bit out of sync, I would say. Okay, if it gets to a crazy level, let me know and I'll see if I can do something about okay. it. Uh, but back to the uh, back to the, the, the onboarding, whenever you're looking at someone, uh, if someone's been through a hiring process, uh, they've been for a first, second, third interview, maybe taking an assessment and so on, uh, then, what all employers need to understand or need to appreciate is that that same candidate is probably doing the same thing with other uh, employers and other jobs. Uh, so it's a competitive situation, especially you know in some sectors. And it's not just the candidate who's winning this role, you're winning the candidate. Uh, and you, you're looking to woo them to come and work at your organization when they might have other options elsewhere. So uh, if you find someone that is good for you, then 
you want to pull out the stops to make the, make sure that you can hire them. And it, it doesn't just come down to offering them a good salary, although that's obviously important. Uh, you want them to feel as if they're part of the organization. So you want the process from from them seeing the advert or you approaching them to you know making an offer to be as seamless as possible. And then that they already feel part of the organization. So in the hiring process, you'll have been going through those steps to, to, to woo the candidate. But if you've offered them the job and they're starting, the, maybe they're working a month's notice uh, and they're starting next month uh, on a, a Monday morning at nine o'clock, you can't ignore them between now and then. You have to be, uh, you have to have your arms around them. Uh, and and onboarding begins right there. In fact, on, onboarding begins at the job advert, to be honest. But uh, in that process, you need to communicate with candidates on a regular basis. Uh, and video is a great way of doing that. Uh, you can obviously you can be have, you can have video calls on a one to one basis, which is easy. But you can be sending out videos with updates on you know here's your this is your your new desk if it's an office based uh, position uh, here's your uh, your your team you might have a short video of the team introducing themselves uh, you can send them video content that explains more about the organization that you wouldn't share with someone who doesn't work there yet but this person's about to join so they can be doing all of that and feel part of the team before they start so when they do start they already feel that they're part of the brickwork. Uh, and, and onboarding uh, can be much more, as I say, that word authentic uh, and engaging when you use video. Uh, and the video content that you make for that, you can you can do fresh ones every time. And I would recommend doing that, but you might have standard videos that explain about the organization, the, the history of the company, uh, you know, current challenges, that sort of thing. You could have that that you use for multiple new hires. Yeah, totally agree. Um, and obviously, you know, with uh, as an ATS, you know, we do our very best to facilitate video, whether it's having, you know, rich media job adverts or from an onboarding perspective, we recognize that you've got almost like the four C's of onboarding, which is compliance, context, culture and connection. Yeah. Um, and we were doing the compliance bit really well, but actually we realized that there was a whole piece that was missing and it was that context, it was that culture, it was that connection piece. So we created mm -hmm. a green room that facilitates things like video introductions and all that kind of thing. But if mm. you don't have an ATS that, that provides all of that in terms of supporting your recruiting processes, you know, you've got one of these. So many people now using WhatsApp. <laughs> so yeah. you can just record a video in less than a minute, inviting a new hire or welcoming a new hire. Um, yeah. The team can get involved as well. It's only quick WhatsApp videos. It takes no time at all. They're easily accessible and it costs nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I... Again, that uh, that first step to uh, to getting team members to record video, there's an element of bravery involved in that. So, yeah. what uh, what I would always encourage uh, people within a team to do is, if you're going to send a message to a new a new hire, uh, and maybe the team have met the person in the interview process, maybe they haven't, but asking people to do a you know a, a one person to video on the phone. It, they kind of you know they're, they're a bit shy about doing that, but if you ask two people to go on video. Uh, you say, right, we'll put the phone over there. It might be a third person holds the phone, or maybe you've got a little tripod. Uh, incidentally, I, I, I'll just grab them here. Uh, a little tripod like this is perfect, you know, with a light on top. Uh, but uh, uh, that's from video, my job. But there's other ones that you can buy elsewhere. But uh, <laughs> if you've got if you've got uh, uh, two people talking to each other, uh, as uh, uh, and that video is going out to the new hire, the conversation could be talking about. Uh, uh, the job, talking about how excited they are for the new person to be joining. And the way, the trick to do that is actually, imagine you're in a pub and you've got two people talking, but there's a third person there. So every now and then you would look to the third person to include them in the conversation. And the two people are then not too shy about making the video because they've got each other. Uh, they've got something to talk about. You've set the scene. Uh, and it might literally be, you know, 20, 30 seconds of, uh, you know, we're looking forward to, uh, to, to to Mary joining next Monday. It's going to be great. He, this is the first thing we're going to be doing together. Uh, and, you know, talking about those kinds of things. So it includes the person who's who, who's joining and they feel that they've already been introduced. Fab. I love that. So although we spent all this time on Teams and Zoom and what have you, <clears throat> interviews, you know, video interviews are as important now as, as real interviews, because let's face it, you know, I think it's very few people that are going to be conducting in-person interviews anymore. There's probably yeah. a few tips or considerations in all of that. 
Um, I'm thinking things like making sure that you've got your background set the right way, that you've done all the prep beforehand and you're not fumbling around on the screen to try and find applications or CVs and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. Making sure that actually in a, in a video interview, it is as important as an in-person interview, so making sure that you're not getting interrupted and things. But have you got any other tips that you would share that people yeah. can perhaps frame and, and perhaps almost create a bit of a guide, especially for you know hiring managers, interviewing managers, for yeah. doing it with confidence? Well, first of all, from a, from a, from both sides of the equation, if you have a, 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 an in-person uh, but video interview, you know it's happening at the same time as opposed to recorded interviews. Then, on both sides, whether you're the hiring manager or you're the uh, the, the candidate, uh, there are a number of advantages from doing it on video uh, that you just can't have in a you know in, in a, an in-person uh, interview uh, for example if i'm sitting with you right now i could have a, a document on screen uh, which has my cv in front of it so you're looking at you, you're interviewing me you're asking about my cv people often they don't, they don't remember specifically what they put on their CV, but if you have it right in front of you and you might have examples on, you know, work that you've done that you can talk about, then you've literally got your notes uh, on in a Word document, you know, on the side of the screen. You can you can put the document over your own face. One one thing actually, uh, <clears throat> top tip, when you're, when you're on Zoom or a call like this, people are often distracted by their own face uh, because Unless you're shaving, wash your face in the morning, people really look at themselves that much, uh, and it's it, it can be off-putting because because you think, oh, my hair's not sitting right, or my makeup's not on, or I should have worn my different specs. But if you have a, a a document and you just drag it and hover it over your own face, then you're not distracted by yourself, uh, which is a handy thing to do. And you've got notes right in front of you, the things that you want to bring up. Uh, so you you might be uh, you know planning on giving examples of when you did this or examples when you did that. And as a candidate, that's really good to do. And as the hiring manager, again, you've got the CV of the candidate, you've got questions you want to ask, you've got areas that you want to explore, uh, and you can have that in a document on screen. And you can go from tab to tab. If someone mentions in the interview, oh, I used to work for such and such a company, then you can, while you're on, uh, on screen with them, you can be going to LinkedIn, you could be doing a quick look up of that company. You can say, oh, I see you work for such and such who used to work with me years ago doing, you know, so you can make the connections. So in a, in a, in a video interview, both sides can be doing that. The candidate can be looking up LinkedIn and looking up the hiring manager uh, and seeing uh, mu mutual connections uh, and dropping those in. And it might be as silly as they've mentioned somewhere that they were a Man United fan. And, uh, and and you've got something to say about that? No, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get into an argument. But if if it was something that you related to, then that would be great. You might have gone to the same university. You might have you know lived in the same town at some point. But those things are really helpful and a great way of of uh, you know making a connection with the person on the other side of the screen. So whether you're the hiring manager or the candidate, then video can be great for you. Now, when it comes to uh, recorded interviews. Uh, I have to admit, I'm I, I'm not a big fan of them, but I know that there's great value in them. And the great value is is that from a from a hiring point of view, you can ask you know multiple candidates to record a video interview uh, and and give answers to set questions that you've you've given them, and that's 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 all good. Uh, my only my only uh, problem with them is that from a candidate's point of view, it seems to be unfair because you've asked me to record something for you. Uh, and I'm not entirely warmed up to the job yet. You know, so you're asking me to, to, to basically sell myself when you haven't sold yourself to me. So I think if, if employers are looking to get candidates to do that, then it's only fair that they should record a video that's sent to the candidate in the first place. So I can't, I, 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 they go first effectively. You know, here's what we, we, we do. This is what the job is. This is, you know, Joe Bloggs, the hiring manager uh, who you're gonna be working with. So if, if, if I give something to you, then asking for something in return in terms of a, a recorded interview uh, seems more fair. Uh, so, you know, uh, that that's a, a rule that I would certainly set for employers. It can also be the case, of course, when a candidate records. Well, if you had twenty candidates recording a a, a video interview, that the person who's then going through those videos, they might they might exercise bias in a way that you wouldn't want them to. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if, if if I was looking at uh, twenty. Uh, two minute interviews uh then you know multiply that up you can see how long it's going to take and if i'm going to be taking notes and doing it thoroughly it's going to take a bit longer than that but what can happen is the person reviewing the uh, the videos 
they give it a quick 20 seconds, like the look of this person, proceed to the next stage, like, like, don't like. And if you've if you've ever interviewed anyone, you'll know, and, and we're all experienced recruiters, you'll know that when you interview someone for, say, a half hour or an hour, uh, in the first five minutes, you might take an instant dislike to someone. But by the end of the interview, you've really warmed up to them and you think, what was I thinking? This person's a genius. Yeah, and by the same token, it's quite naturally you're going to have some nerves in the first five minutes as well. And I, yeah. I, to, to your point about pre-recorded videos, I, I've got to say, I really agree. Mm. It puts quite a considerable amount of pressure on the individual. Mm. And I, again, I agree with your, it's almost an exchange. You know, I'm prepared to put myself on screen and record myself to introduce you to basically add a human element to the recruitment process. Tech is great. Yeah. but it needs to facilitate human connection rather than taking it away um and yeah for me i think live interviews are, are much better and they place, mm. they, they place less pressure people naturally when they first switch on that camera are going to feel a little bit nervous but if it you've got a half hour interview it gives them the opportunity to, to ease into it a little bit too so no i i think those yeah. those are really helpful tips and and i like the one also about um, having notes on screen as well. And it's sometimes, you know, seeing your face on screen can be a little bit unnerving. I yeah. would love to say that I'd remembered all the points that we were going to discuss today, but I cheated <laughs> totally. I've got a copy of our um, Job Train How Talent Webinars page I'm on so I could just read through it and stuff. And it, yeah. and it, and it does really help. Conscious of time, um, in, in terms of the tech that people need, you know, from your experience, and I know that you, you love a bit like me, you love your tech. Things. Yeah. What, what's the, what the, sort of the, the core basics that people need in order to um, record and produce a video uh, professionally, yeah. um, sound equipment, all that kind of stuff? Just a, okay. a few quick uh, well, tips. First of all, if, if, you, are a, if you are a an employer, uh, mm -hmm. then when you buy any, uh, any of the modern uh, uh, webcams, this is a webcam here, uh, then that'll come with software that has the ability to uh, record uh, content in there straight away. So you can make MP4 files uh, of that. So if you've got a, a, a reasonable web camera uh, and don't cut corners, uh, if, if, you can, if you can spend 100 pounds on a, on a webcam, you'll get a very good quality one, that, that one there. This one that I'm using here is a bit more expensive, but uh, there's, there's no real need for that. I'm making a lot of uh, video content, but, in the scheme of things, uh, 100 pounds of webcam is nothing. This microphone that I'm using, uh, I think that with the boom arm costs maybe about 120 pounds. Uh, and it means that the quality is gonna be uh, roughly up to the, uh, the, 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 you know, the level that you're expecting. And you don't want to sound tinny uh, online. So in terms of microphone and camera, that's, that's you, you're, you're, you're off to the races. I, I use a tool here called ManyCam. So you can see I've got my uh, Nora logo down here. Uh, and there's a free version, you can use that for nothing, but for, I can't remember what it is in pounds, but $29, uh, you can get the uh, the paid for version, which has much more tools on it. But it means that when you're when you're recording uh, messages uh, as, a, as the employer, uh, then if, if, if we're talking about employer branding, then literally you need to be branding, you've got to have your logo on screen. And uh, uh, it, it's, if you know how to use PowerPoint, you know how to use this. It's it's an absolute doddle to use. So that sort of thing from an employer's point of view is, I think that's the minimum uh, because if you're if you're sending out messages to candidates, you want you want to appear professional. You want to appear that you've you've got it together. So that sort of thing uh, you can do really easily. Yeah. There are lots of tools that uh, that are out there for you know video interviewing. Uh, company uh, one company that's that's come on leaps and bounds in terms of video interviewing and employer branding messaging uh, is a company called Audro. Uh, but there's lots of others. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier on, Video My Job I did work with last year, and they do everything. But it's on your your mobile phone. Audro is all on your webcam. Uh, there are. Uh, lots of other companies like HireView and, uh, and, and, and and Cameo and so on out there. You can go around those. And the biggest benefit of those from an employer's point of view is the ability to organize the content that you generate. But if you're just making videos on a video-to-video a -video basis, then uh, uh, webcam and mic and off you go and, and set up a YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. If you set up a YouTube channel, then every bit of content that you make that's for general consumption informs anyone who's considering coming to work for your company. So uh, save the good ones, put them on YouTube, make them public, uh, share them widely. Uh, and uh, uh, and that, the, 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 the 
the body of work, if you like, that you build up over you know weeks and months, uh, gives a real three dimensional picture of your organisation, uh, and it's a great thing to do. And if someone yeah. leaves the company that's in one of the videos, then just delete the video. It's fine. Yeah. No, I, mean, I think brilliant tips, really helpful. And I've got to say, you know, I, I, hopefully I'm coming through or have come through loud and clear through these sessions. I'm only literally using my laptop. I have here. Um, yeah. A little microphone that was forty quid on Amazon. So you don't have to spend an awful lot of money just to enhance, you know, the quality of the videos that you produce that much. Um, mm -hmm. But Steve, this has been brilliant. I think there probably be lots of people out there thinking, okay, great, but this is this has been helpful, but I perhaps need some extra support. Um, Stephen is available. Um, so <laughs> if you wanted some <laughs> professional consultancy around producing video, um, understanding, perhaps producing some frameworks and things for hiring managers, all those kinds of things, Stephen mm -hmm. can help with that. Yeah. I think Stephen, you put your LinkedIn profile in the sidebar yeah. to start yeah, this conversation. The chat bar up at the top. So I say to everybody, if, you, if you've got benefit from this, but perhaps you feel you need some extra support, then please do link in with, with Stephen. He's got loads yeah. of experiences. You probably um, realize today through the course of this conversation, I can't thank you enough. Um, it's You're been very brilliant. Welcome. I've learned loads this morning and yeah. I hope everybody's got value from this. So thank you. I hope you'll thank all you. come and join us for another Job Train How Talent session. But until then, have a terrific week and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks, then. Bye bye.